Hi, Scott. You want to do a quick sound check? Yeah. Hello. I'm coming to you live from room 127. Thank you. Nice we to are, see you all. Thank you. We are live at this time. So we're going to go ahead and have you turn your computer off and I mean, your camera and microphone until we're, until we're go live. Good evening, everybody. It's 5.30. We can go ahead and begin our meeting for the Fremont Park San Rosa Community Meeting number two. Thank you and welcome everybody. I am Jen Santos, the Deputy Director for Parks at the City of Santa Rosa. I just wanna welcome you to the meeting and thank you very much for joining us tonight. We know you all have very busy schedules and we're really happy that you could join us here for this important meeting to talk about Fremont Park. And with that, I'm going to introduce uh, and turn the meeting over to Scott Wilkinson, the project manager for Fremont Park Project. And we'll go through our presentation tonight. Thank you, Jen. Um, happy to be here. Thanks everyone for joining us here tonight as we um, have our second meeting in the master planning process to re-envision um, Fremont Park. Uh, located in downtown Santa Rosa. Um, I wanna just start off by covering a, a few housekeeping items before we get into the uh, meat of the, the meeting and the presentation itself. I'd like to first introduce um, our meeting hosts who are working behind the scenes to keep the meeting going here, uh, Alisa Rawson and Shelly McClure. They will be coordinating um, comments and helping to um, manage uh, those throughout the meeting and for any other uh, needs that come up. Um, at this time, I wanna make sure that panelists and presenters uh, please have their cell phones silenced and microphones muted if you are not currently speaking. Um, simultaneous Spanish interpreter services are also uh, being provided for tonight's meeting. And um, now, um, our host will explain how those are gonna be uh, working throughout the me meeting tonight. Thank you, Scott. Um, live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon in the Zoom toolbar. It looks like a globe. 
para, las, para las personas que buscan interpretación en español, pueden acceder al canal de interpretación simultánea en español. En la parte baja de la pantalla van a encontrar el icono, es un pequeño globito. Si hacen clic en este, ahí van a encontrar la interpretación en español simultánea. At the time um, and during public comment, the interpreter on the panel will be prepared to assist anyone needing interpretation. It is recommended that you shut off the main audio so you can clearly hear the Spanish interpretation. Additional instruction will be given at that time. Scott, back to you for additional housekeeping for today's meeting. Thanks, Elisa. Uh, just Scott, just one sec. He's got to interpret that. Go ahead, Gilberto. Para las personas que les gustaría hacer su comentario durante el momento de comentarios públicos, por favor, le vamos a dar interpretación cómo hacer esto exactamente. Vamos a tener a un intérprete disponible para que cambie del canal de español a inglés para que haga su comentario. Después yo haré la interpretación y por favor se le recuerda que mantenga sus teléfonos, a el micrófono de su teléfono apagado si no está hablando en ese momento. Y después le daremos un poquito más de información sobre cómo se va a llevar a cabo esta interpretación al momento de que haga sus comentarios. Thank you for that, Gilberto. We're going to go ahead and move you on over into that Spanish channel. And uh, again, for staff, um, just please make sure that when you are speaking, uh, we are speaking slow so they can uh, translate what we are saying. And with it, Scott, we'll turn it back over to you. Okay, thank you, Gilberto. Thank you, Elisa. Um, Again, we're going to be going over, this is our second meeting here uh, in this process. We're going to be reviewing um, some, uh, a lot of the input that we've received thus far and looking at um, some exciting conceptual uh, designs here for the, for the future of the park. But first, like, like uh, I said, uh, we have a few more housekeeping items. And that is uh, just uh, to say that um, you, you all are participating um, as members of the public, as attendees on the, on the um, Uh, webinar here, and uh, meaning that your cameras and your microphones or uh, cameras will be disabled and microphones will be muted uh, for um, the majority of the presentation. Um, and if you are calling from, uh, and that is except for if during the question and answer period, if you have something to say, a question or a comment, you will be able to raise your hand and uh, provide that question or comment at that time. If you're calling in from a telephone um, for privacy concerns, the host will be renaming your viewable phone number on the screen to citizen and only the four last four digits of your phone number will show on the screen. Um, once our informational presentation concludes, Like I said, we will have a question and answer period for you to participate in at that time. Um, you will be allowed to raise your hand and our Zoom host will move one by one down the list of attendees that have their hands raised. And once you have asked your question or shared your input, the Zoom host will lower your hand and you will again be returned to a muted position on the, on the meeting, on the webinar. Uh, and then we would ask if you hear your question asked by another attendee that um, you would kindly lower your hand um, in the interest of time. We want to make sure that we're able to cover uh, everything we need to cover and hear from all those who wish to speak. Um, additionally, I will say that the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment that is free from disruption. Hateful speech or actions will not be tolerated. And everyone is expected to participate respectfully in the meeting, um, or if necessary, the meeting will end uh, immediately. So thank you for that. And um, with that, I would like to, um, I think you could move to the next slide at this point. Thank you, Scott. We're gonna throw in a quick reminder Okay. to have the speaker speak slow enough so that the interpreters can keep up with the translation. Got it. Are we good to go now? We are good to go. Okay, thank you. So um, we are super excited to be working with um, 
a very creative landscape architecture firm, Meyer Studio Landscape Architects on this project. Um, they're going to help us um, develop a plan that is, uh, you know, sensitive to the to the historical aspect of this park and um, and also uh, one that will breathe activity uh, and and bring active uses into the park, which um, we believe is is something that is 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 really needed um, for the the site. So with that, I'm going to turn over the presentation to um, Nicole Kelly and David Meyer from Meyer Landscape uh, Studio Landscape Architects. Take it away. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Jen. Um, and thank you to all who are here today. Um, I want you to know that your voice and what we hear from you tonight really matters. Um, after the first community meeting, I was our whole team was really invigorated by the number of thoughtful comments that we received. It was just amazing. Um, and then we had 250 or so comments online um, and it, that's kind of unheard of. So keep it up, we're listening to everything um, and it's really, really um, so great to know that this park is so well loved. Um, I'm especially grateful to anyone who is attending their first community meeting or if you're a student of the middle school, um, we are really, really excited. We've tried hard to reach out to um, as many young people as possible. So your voice is really important and I'm just um, so, so glad that you're here today. Um, next slide. One more. So um, the agenda for tonight, we're going to briefly talk about the project goals and the objectives. Um, we'll touch on the schedule and find out where we are and, and what we can expect in the next couple months and, and um, at years. Um, for the um, following that, we'll talk about the survey results and what you've told us um, up to now. Um, we had um, surveys in the last community meeting. We also had an online survey and we'll go over all of those results. Um, and then I'm gonna present four park schemes. Um, we'll start by digging into the site analysis, taking a look at the where the park, what the park looks like today, and what we think um, what we think its strengths and weaknesses might be. And then we'll um, go into how we imagine the park could be um, with four different schemes, site diagrams that we'd love um, you guys to vote on. Um, and your feedback on. So you, right after you see our designs, we'll be able to take a poll. Um, we'll close with an invitation to take the online survey. We'll talk about next steps and we'll provide contact information in case you wanna reach out to us. Um, next slide. So the project goal, we want to reimagine Fremont Park through community participation. <laughs> Um, so again, we're really excited you're here and we can't wait to hear your thoughts. Um, we wanna create a safe, inclusive and welcoming green space. Um, we wanna enhance the park's beauty and celebrate its past. We wanna improve park amenities, infrastructure and experience, user experience. And um, finally, we wanna strike a balance between honoring the site's original design while also creating a space that works for current future and future youth and families. Next slide. So we got started um, in November of last year. We had a community meeting um, already, uh, like we said, and we have, um, so we're on community meeting number two. The next community meeting will be sometime in April, we believe. Um, and at that point, we're going to present a distillation of, of what you've told us today. So today you'll see four designs. Um, and at the next community's meeting, we will have taken all of your comments and, and created one design. Um, so that will happen in April. Um, project construction is slated to start in summer of 2023. Next slide. So um, we're going to talk a moment about what you've already told us. Um, so it seems if you can see the quadrant map on the on the left hand side of the screen, 
it shows that majority of people who are responding to um, the survey and, and coming to the meeting live in the northeast quadrant, which makes sense because that's that's the quadrant the park is located in. Um, we asked, what is the primary reason that you visit Fremont Park now? And sadly, we think um, there's not many people visiting the park because none of the above um, or none of the below, I should say, 43% um, said they weren't visiting the park essentially, um, but 23% say they do go to enjoy nature, 10% to walk the dog, lunch breaks, um, you drop off your, um, your student at the middle school, um, enjoy the water elements, socialize and enjoy art. Next slide. Um, what features would make Fremont a great park? Um, you got to choose three. Seating areas was high on the list, um, and it was these were all kind of grouped together. Walking paths, gardens, play elements, public art, open lawn, followed by community garden, sports courts, um, dog park, or none of the above. So seating areas, walking paths, gardens, natural elements, were, and play play elements were usually high on everyone's list. We um, we asked about relocating the Cancer Survivor Memorial. Um, if what your thoughts were about relocating it within the park or to another park in downtown Santa Rosa. 37.2% um, of you thought agreed or strongly agreed with the idea of moving it or relocating um, the, the Cancer Survivor Memorial um, elements. 30% had no preference. 15% said that you need, needed a little more information. And 18% of you um, said you'd, you'd like us to keep it in the park. Um, but it seems like there was a, um, the, the, the idea of relocating, it seemed to be more favorable with many of the respondents. Next slide. What sports features would you like to see in the park? Um, no sports became um, the, was the strongest reply. Um, it seems like, um, really passive, act, um, passive acti activities were um, more desirable. So, but ping pong and chess got um, some votes to 34.5. Basketball followed by skate park or skate equipment and athletic equipment. What play features would you like to see in the park? Natural play was high on the list. Um, climbing features followed by swings, game tables, standard play equipment, slides, um, and then some smaller uh, mounts for play mounds or sand pits. Um, so natural play, climbing pictures, swings, um, those were uh, you know, ways for kids to get out there and play were, were high on the list. Next slide. So when we asked a more open-ended question, what do you wanna see at the park? What do you think would make park a great, this Fremont Park a great place? A lot of people, and, and these were open-ended, so you could answer it with anything. A lot of people talked about benches, play areas, trees, shade, um, walking paths, those, those um, lighting, making sure there's good lighting, um, movie nights. Um, so these really, the larger the word, the more we heard it. So it um, seems like there was a real emphasis on creating places to make um, you know, comfortable places to sit and um, watch kids play. And of course, the beautiful trees. Um, next slide. What would you like to see in the design? Some other responses that we got were about safety, maintenance, and cleanliness. That was really overwhelmingly one of the things, um, 127 people mentioned that in, the, in their response. Um, Keeping it nature and um, the park natural and with passive recreation was um, 80, 83 people mentioned this. Um, making the park open, inviting, and family friendly, um, 59 people. Um, a lot of you talked about you wanted Fremont Park to become a place for community activation. Um, and that's, we really love that. There was a lot of people who talked about the idea of, of Hope Street having maybe food trucks or using this park to be hold community events. Um, active recreation came up 7.4%. Um, um, people would mention a certain sport or a certain activity that they liked, and that's we kind of grouped those all together. 
historic preservation, um, people mentioned the history, uh, 28 people mentioned the history. The cancer memorial, people, 24 people commented on it, most of them about removing it, but there were a, a couple comments about saving it. Um, 15 people said, keep it as it is. And then um, a few of you mentioned public art. Next slide. And some of the comments that we, these are just examples of some of the comments we heard, um, like uh, for the activation uh, or the sports, um, we have several comments for bocce courts. Um, the comments about um, play equipment and a more open field. People talked often about opening up the park. So you can see across the park. I would like to see it get a refresh. It feels forgotten. Um, some people wanted to, we had a couple comments on making sure the park was accessible for those in wheelchairs and probably pushing strollers. Um, the cancer memorial dominates the current space and renders it uninviting. Um, it must be moved to a quiet, it should be moved to an off the beaten path location in a much larger space. Um, and then scattered trees and covered areas with benches to sit and have protection from the elements with a few picnic tables. So that was a comment that we heard quite a bit. Um, and then finally, um, talking about art and highlighting local artists. Next slide. So we got a range of ideas and comments and concepts from you and we really heard um, what you're what your priorities are. Um, what you're looking at now, we're gonna talk a little bit about the site itself. You're looking at a bird's eye view. So the park from above. Um, the, the layout of the park in the past looks very similar, similar to the original drawing. The original drawing for the park was posted online on the city's website. Um, it's a little hard to read, so we're not showing it tonight, but um, you can see the pond located at the top um, and there where the art was, where the art is located between the U's. There was originally plans for a, a reflecting pool there. And then just below that, um, you can see a yellow tree uh, noted as a cork oak. There was also plans for an additional fountain, um, additional water feature with some seat walls around it, planned for that um, lower corner on lower um, nook on Forest Street. Um, so the central promenade would have been, you know, full of water features if, if Howard Gilkey had had um, the design fully built. Another part of the original design um, included um, some really beautiful native plants that were along the western um, property line underneath the redwoods. Um, those are, are no longer here today, um, or, um, but some of the plants and trees that he had on his plan are still here. For example, the redwoods, um, the three cluster of redwoods um, at Fifth Street, close to Fifth Street, those are in the original design. Um, the cypress tree, the beautiful, beautiful cypress tree that you'll, you'll see in a couple of our designs really focus, um, we celebrate that tree. Um, that was part of the original design. Um, and as were the yews, um, there was also a few other ornamental trees that um, are, are existing, some um, um, crepe myrtles that are unfortunately in poor health. He also had um, rows of peach trees designed to go outside the yews, and who knows if those were ever installed, but um, the planting plan, um, the really um, important parts of the planting plan that live today are in the trees, in the cypress, and in the redwoods. Um, the design of the park is really, um, it was designed and installed in the late 1920s, and it's really a park for strolling um, and appreciating nature. Um, and we feel like that is a great idea. It's a great for a larger park, perhaps, like Golden Gate Park or Central Park, but it makes today for a very short visit because the park just isn't large enough um, uh, there's um, not really large enough to, once you walk through it, there's no magnet and there's no um, activation currently. You can see the path leading underneath the cypress tree. We have four paths kind of leading to a space that we kind of, it's kind of like a dead zone. There's nothing there. Um, so we just, um, you know, in, in thinking about the site, we, we believe that the, the layout is perhaps um, not working for um, 
activating the park today. And what we really want is to bring people to the park and get them to stay and get them to love it. Um, so let's see, as you know, the park is located in a really wonderful spot. It's walkable. It's at the, um, located between 4th and 5th at Hope Street. Um, adjacent to, it's at the back of the middle school, is right across the street on 5th. Um, we have um, great visibility on the Hope Street and 5th Street side. Um, it's really open. The traffic on Hope is really slow, if there's any cars at all. So that corner, um, we see that as a, like a, a good, good location for a good um, potential location for activation. Um, in the future, we think that pedestrian traffic is, there's going to be most pedestrian traffic will come from downtown um, and, and also from the future housing development. You can see in blue across fourth, there's a future um, apartment building going in there. Um, and we, we believe that that will be great for bringing young families to the park as well. So we really see the lower, the fourth street side is, is how many people will circulate and come into the park. Um, next slide. Some of the original park elements, um, you can see a historic photo in the top left showing the fountain as it was originally designed, um, the, the ram's head um, at the back of the wall um, and water would come out of its mouth and then um, cascade down. Um, and you can really, it's a very romantic park. You can imagine a lady with a beautiful dress and a big hat and maybe a parasol walking by um, is really, um, you know, created in a, an era of, 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 you know, where people would stroll through the park and enjoy nature and you can see the beautiful setting behind it. Today, unfortunately, um, the wall is creating a visual barrier um, and it's about 44 feet tall. And so it's, it's kind of lending to some of the sightline issues that we have um, along Fifth Street. Also, you can see the pond itself. Um, the city is, um, it's become really difficult to maintain the water feature. Um, and with the current drought and um, the severe drought that we're in, it's just become a untenable maintenance um, for the park, uh, for, for the city. Um, next slide. One of the other original park elements that is a bit problematic are the U's. Um, they're creating a double set of walls um, in the center of the park, which divide the very heart of the park into three separate spaces. So when you're on one side, you can see it's almost, you can't really see through and you can't see what's on the other side. And it creates some safety and sightline issues that, um, that we think are, or that we heard also many comments talking about um, sightline issues. So um, we heard people, some of you um, like the use, and so and you'll see in some of our designs, we'll keep, we'll keep a couple of them um, in honor of the design, but we think that it's probably best to open up the center of the park and, and you'll see that in a few moments. Next slide. Um, within the use um, is the Cancer Survivor Plaza. Um, so in 2000, the Cancer Survivor um, Memorial Plaza was installed. It includes this wall, um, this um, monument signage on the top left. Um, this is on 4th Street. There's also additional signage on the back of the fountain um, that you can see in the top right. In the bottom left is the, the art um, that was installed. Uh, memorializing people who have come through a difficult time. And then within the U Grove at the base of the U's, there's a positive mental attitude walk. Um, and it has several um, plaques um, with um, quotes about positive, um, positive mental attitude and about ways to make it through a difficult time. Um, Moving forward, as, as you saw in some of the comments and when we um, reached out in the surveys, it was determined that most people are, are comfortable with relocating these elements. So you'll see in our designs that we don't include the um, cancer survivor uh, memorial in future park designs. 
Um, if we are going to, that is not a completely, um, all right, it's not set in stone. So we are asking you again, we'll ask you again today um, to make note and to um, give us your thoughts on, on, on relocating it again, just to make sure that is okay with the community. Next slide, please. Okay, the trees. The reason that Fremont Park is just such a wonderful, magical place, and the reason I think it is so well loved is because it's an oasis of beautiful trees. Um, the on the left is a butternut tree, we think. Um, it's either walnut or butternut, but if it is a butternut tree, it will be the largest in California, according to the RR Arborist, which is really special. Um, and then the redwoods. In the center, these are the original redwoods. We think this um, underneath this grove of redwoods is a really magical place. Um, and we have a few different ideas about what to do um, underneath that grove. Um, and then the cedar is on the far right. Um, that is a really old and beautiful majestic cedar tree. Um, again, part of the original planting plan. So we really wanna honor and celebrate that tree. Now, trees that aren't showing up here, but which are really beautiful, I know right now are the saucer magnolias, which are blooming because when a member of our team was just at the park last week and we couldn't get the slide, the photo in here in time, but um, by the pond and also at the corner, there's saucer magnolias, which are also really nice. Um, next slide. Okay, so, I am going to show you four different ways of thinking about the park. Um, these layouts are really diagrams. Um, when you're looking at these concepts, I want you to really don't feel like this park is designed and it's set in stone. These are just diagrams um, thinking about the park in different ways, different pathways, different um, open spaces, different elements, um, but it's really just to get your feedback. Each has a certain feature that was mentioned um, that was important to the community. So we are um, presenting them here today and um, as a work in progress. So um, uh, you'll get definitely, there'll be an evolution of whatever concept we um, we find is is most favorable to the community. Um, so let's uh, I, the first one that I'm going to show you today is the original layout reimagined. The second one we're calling patchwork of play. The third one is artful organic, and the fourth one is called the open heart. So with that, I'll take the next slide. Okay, so. The original layout reimagined. Um, we did look at using the original footprint exactly as it was before, um, but we felt two things, that the park was still divided and that the focal point or the magnet that we were hoping that this park can become was too small and in the wrong location. Um, so we, we took the oval shape of the pond that's there today and we expanded it and made it larger and brought it into the center of the park. Um, we brought it into the center of the park on axis with that beautiful cypress tree. So you can see the central part of this park um, has a sculptural play element. Um, and on um, the top right, excuse me, yes, the top right photo, you can see what we'll talk, we're talking about. Um, that play element, we really want to be something spectacular. This is um, a humpback whale um, in Emeryville and a park that is all about the Pacific Ocean. So where it's, it's a site specific play, play element. And we kind of, we see the same thing for Santa Rosa, uh, her Fremont Park, and that this play element, whatever it is, um, can also honor the history of Santa Rosa in some way, or the some special part or history about the park or the location or the city itself. So we want this um, play element to be special and sculptural. From the oval, you can see that there are pathways um, radiating out um, to 
um, 4th Street at the corner and then um, closer to downtown, because again, that's how we really see people entering the space. The um, promenade that was originally designed is that is still there in the center of the space, taking you from 5th to 4th. Um, um, opposite the cypress tree, we have a trellis. So we have seating area. So parents could sit under there and eat lunch and watch their kids play. Um, and there's also um, additional seat walls underneath the cedar tree and um, ringing the oval. We have four of the U's. Um, you'll see at the top and then uh, um, entrance to the the play area, there's four of them. I believe two of them are, are in their um, current location and then we'd have to replant two more. But these can really be markers and um, gateways into the central space. In the corner um, at Fifth Street underneath the Redwoods, we're showing a natural play area. Um, you can see in the bottom photo on the right, this is, um, it's a playground that feels at home underneath trees. Um, so it's probably going to be wood with bark mulch underneath. Um, it's something, it can still be fun. This is, I think, a grasshopper perhaps or a, a oh. praying mantis. You can still have something that um, is unique, but it's just the, the idea of it being a nat having a natural feel and, and being really at home underneath a grove of redwoods. Um, the stone historic marker that you, um, you can see underneath the cedar tree, that is relocated from the corner. The corner, if you are familiar with the corner and the magnolia trees there, there's a historic um, plaque located on a stone that talks about the first um, transfer of um, how the park became, um, became city property and that's um, memorialized in that plaque. So that would be moved underneath the, the the cedar tree in this scheme. Next slide. We've created 3D views so that you can kind of get a more, um, you can really dive in and get a better view of how the park might feel. So you can see the promenade through the center of the park and the paths radiating out from the oval. You can see the trellis with the seating opposite, opposite the, the cedar. That's existing. Um, the central play area, um, and then you can see that around that central play area, we really designed that air, uh, paving around the, the central play area to be wide. So you can imagine that people would be walking around, kids might be riding scooters, but it's wide enough to, to take some traffic. Um, and then you can see the natural play area underneath the, the redwoods. Um, so that's scheme one. Next slide. Number two is what we're calling patchwork of play. This layout is, is similar in spirit to the last one in that it contains a central plaza space um, on access with the cedar tree. It also maintains the, the promenade um, that takes you from fifth down to fourth. Um, in this case, the, the cedar tree is um, opposite a trellis that's linear. So the, the layout of this park is a bit more linear than the previous one. Um, the, um, the other difference here is that we, um, with the park being so close to the middle school, and um, we do, it was always on our mind, like how are we going to bring youth and middle schoolers and kids of all ages, how are they gonna create, how do we create a space for them? And we did hear a few, um, few younger members um, mention skate elements in this park. So we are including some of those at the top, um, at the corner of Hope and Fifth. Um, these, we don't believe that this park can have a skate park, like a bowl and um, a large skate park, but we do think that this park um, could have some skate elements. So you can see the middle photo, you know, you can imagine younger kids on their scooter um, and kids on their um, skateboards kind of being at home in the same place. So that's at the corner of Fifth and Hope. Adjacent to that, we have a playground. And then underneath the redwoods on this, on this design, we have a dog park. 
Um, just another way to use that space on the, on the western boundary underneath the redwoods and trees. Um, we have an open lawn and then we have a bocce court. So you can imagine if you're sitting under that trellis, um, you could play bocce or you could be watching a community event um, in the central plaza. The central plaza it is showing an art element. We, we talked about this with the team and we're talking about the idea of the, you've maybe seen pictures of Millennium Park in Chicago with the beam, the beam that is like a mirror. It's an art feature that really draws people into the park and in, it's very engaging. So um, we can see uh, this plaza holding a piece of art and this red tubular shape at the top is something equally engaging. That it's not exactly representing what we think would be there, but we the idea that kids could play on it, it could draw people in, that's what we really wanna um, convey. So that, that public plaza feel would be a great place for community activate um, community events and like you know that sort of thing. So on either side of the plaza, we have seat walls, um, memorial seat walls, um, and these seat walls we can imagine they would either be um, historic. There could be historic um, markers within the walls. Um, perhaps we use the same stone as the stone that was in the fountain, um, and or um, perhaps the positive uh, attitude cancer memorial plaques could also be part of that wall, um, the seat walls. And then on either end of the seat walls are the U's. So we, in this, in this design, we have two of the U's transplanted um, as markers into the, the plaza. Next slide. Um, this is a bird's eye view of what the park could look like. So you see, we still have a pretty big open lawn um, with the bocce court and connecting into a trellis with seating underneath, um, connected to the main promenade throughout the park. We have a main, that plaza um, for community events, and we have a seating platform underneath the, the cedar tree. In the corner, you can see the skate elements and then the playground closer to the butternut tree. And you can't really see it but um, on the, underneath the redwoods, we have the dog park. Next slide. This is scheme three. It's called Artful, Artful Organic. Um, this scheme really honors the organic nature and the concept of the um, original design and the idea of walking paths and a strolling, strolling park. Um, and even though we took out the central promenade, we are using, if you can see that the swooping promenade that we have here going from the corner of Fifth and Hope down to Fourth Street, it largely follows paths that are there today, but are a bit more smoothed out. But we see that as a wide promenade with benches on either side um, and a place to sit um, and, and kind of stroll through the park. These paths are, are more for me meandering through. It's a more casual, um, and organic scheme. The, the main heart of the park, um, where the pond was, we relocated um, a play element there and a community plaza. So you can see there's a circular plaza uh, play element and then a tree um, with a seat wall underneath. We also are introducing a large flex flexible lawn space. Um, our office is really close to a, a, a lawn, I mean, a park with a great open lawn and the, part, the middle image is actually taken at that park. Um, it is always used by someone. Um, we can, I think there's a class being held there in this photo. Um, there is uh, picnics, there's volleyball games. And so, you know, many people talked about the openness wanting this park to be open. And we think a flexible lawn would be a great, great way to do that. Um, at, um, in the corner underneath Redwoods, we have parkour or fitness. Um, that is another idea we think that teens and older kids might like. Um, parkour is um, a fast moving, jumping. Um, I've never done it myself, but involves um, a lot of fitness and act um, um, jumping 
and it's great for teens. So that's kind of what you're seeing in the, in the lower photo. Um, there's picnic tables up there under the shade of the butternut tree. Um, the central play area we see as being, um, there's many ways to think about it. In this one, we're thinking about a vertical element so that it has good visibility so you could really see it from 4th Street. Um, this one is a cattail theme um, and you can see the, the um, kids can play in, in the play element and there's a nest and um, so something like that would be a really great um, way to activate that central space. Next slide. Here's a bird's eye view of it. Um, you can imagine coming from downtown and entering the park on the promenade um, and then maybe having lunch on the lawn um, and then making your way to the play area if you have kids. And then you could sit there on the seat wall and you could watch your kids play or watch them throw a Frisbee. Um, and then um, if you're a teenager or just um, want to get a workout, you could go to the parkour area underneath the redwoods. Next slide. So this is scheme four. This is our final scheme. This is called the open heart. Um, the focus here is really to create a space that can be great for picnics, for throwing a frisbee, um, a place that is open and inviting. The oval shape has been rotated 90 degrees, um, and we have what we're calling um, a historic walk. Um, the loop, I, we can imagine people would come perhaps on their lunch breaks and get some exercise by walk, walking the loop. And along this loop, we have historic markers. Um, right now, they're just represented as red circles, but we can see those as stone markers or some sort of um, uh, historic marker that talks about the site, the park history, the history of the city. Um, so those are all along the oval. Um, we have a, a circular pathway system that brings people in the arc coming from downtown, brings you into the park. And then also you have another entrance at the corner of 4th and Hope Street. Um, if you're coming off, if you park at 4th Street, you can enter the park directly there as well. Um, there's a trellis um, and shaded seating and then a, a play area um, right in the center of, of that, um, the lower part of the oval. Um, again, sculptural play, we think that um, something beautiful and um, some, this is, I think, a dragon, the blue one, but something that uh, resonates with the town and, and is, um, talks about the history of the site we think would be great. Perhaps it's a ram, um, you know, hearkening back to the ram on the water feature or something like that. Um, on the, underneath the redwoods on this one, we have a native garden. Um, you know, the scale of that, it's, it's pretty large, so we anticipate that that would need um, um, maybe volunteer support, but we think it's a great place um, to have some California native shade loving um, plants. Um, at the top of the oval, you can see there's another, um, again, directly across from the middle school, it's the teen hangout space. We have parkour and fitness. Um, and the entire, um, Ring around the park, the oval um, has seating available um, around the entire, entire edge. Um, next slide. So this is the bird's eye view looking into it. Again, you can imagine walking in um, adjacent to the native garden, coming into the, um, the oval. And if you want to get some exercise, taking a few laps around the park. Um, you can imagine people playing volleyball or, or having a picnic, but it's really open. All the, the existing trees are maintained, um, the magnolias and um, the oaks that are there today, and that's true for all of the designs. Um, and you really create a, a completely different feel from what's there today um, with the great visibility and the openness and the inviting, um, and the inviting spaces in the park. Um, so, um, oh, I should mention that um, some of these, we did have, um, so you can't see, didn't mention that we have picnic tables um, underneath the trellis. Um, the trellis um, also creates shading for parents who want to watch their kids play. 
I think that covers it. Um, so those are all the designs that we've come up with um, um, in collaboration with Jen and Scott. Um, in a second, you're gonna be asked about your favorite scheme. Um, please know that um, certain elements are interchangeable. What we really wanna know is about the park layout. If you think the idea of a native garden is bad in this park, but you like the way it's laid out, just know that you know the dog park or whatever, all of those little pieces, those elements are interchangeable and you'll get your chance to let us know that later. But what we're really looking for um, when you vote on a scheme is the park layout and the park feel. So try to keep that in mind rather than focusing on a single element when you're, like, when you're picking out between number one, two, three, and four. Um, um, so I think with that, I'm gonna pass it over to um, the host um, and we'll take the community poll. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Nicole. Um, so I'm gonna go over how the polling will work today. Um, all poll questions are multiple choice. You must answer all questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very end of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the survey is posted on the project webpage through March 16th. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and Scott will walk you through those results. We have 10 of the 15 participants have had, had the opportunity to answer. We're going to give this about another minute.
All right, I believe everybody's had the opportunity. We're gonna go ahead and end the poll. Okay, um, thank you everyone for participating. Quickly uh, walk through the results here. Uh, the number one, uh, votes for number one were 30% uh, 30, 30 for the original layout reimagined scheme number one, 10% for the second scheme, patchwork of play. Uh, again, 30% or three out of 10 for the artful organic scheme. And similarly, 30% uh, for the uh, fourth scheme at the number one uh, for the number one choice uh, ranking. So um, that is uh, a pretty good spread. Um, let's move on uh, to the second position. The second choice, 50% had the uh, Original layout reimagined, followed by 20% for artful organic, artful organic, and 20% for open heart, and 10% for the patchwork of play. Number three, 30% patchwork, organic, and heart and 10% for the original layout reimagined. And that would bring us to fourth place. 40% had the original layout reimagined in the fourth position, 30% patchwork of play and 20% open heart and 10% artful organic. So those are the results of our first polling, live polling here. Um, at this point, um, I think we'll roll into our, our second poll, which um, has to do with collecting a bit more information about um, the folks here that are on the call uh, on the webinar. And just want you to look really quickly at this map and determine which number or quadrant uh, number you uh, find yourself living in. And as that will help uh, you answer one of the uh, questions in poll number two. And I believe there are um, six questions in poll number two here. So we'll give you just a little bit of time to complete this one.
It looks like we have six of our participants who've been able to answer all the questions. We're going to go ahead and give it another minute or two. All right, we're going to give you about 30 more seconds. Scott, you're muted. I was muted. Thank you. Live polling results just in. Uh, poll number two. Um, what are your favorite elements in the conceptual park designs? Two is up to four. Um, as you can see, uh, a lot of interest in uh, picnic areas and shaded seating areas at 86%. Um, also scoring high is the historic walk concept at 71%. Um, native plant garden, 57% respondents in favor of a native plant garden, 43% uh, open lawn, the idea of an open and flexible lawn space, 29% um, in favor of uh, bocce, 14% um, dog park, and zero skaters in the crowd tonight, it seems. Um, Question number, oh, there are some more here, sorry. Uh, sculptural play feature at 43%, similar, uh, uh, exactly the same as, as the, the uh, play area, uh, which, which could also be sculptural uh, or, or, or more traditional. We, we will get into the details of that. And uh, the parkour fitness component um, was not a popular item either at 0% responders. Cancer Survivors Memorial should be relocated at 29% to a different part of the park, 14% to actually a different park. And um, the majority, the, mo mo the highest uh, responders uh, responded to that it should be donated to an organization or perhaps a, a hospital or, or another clinic. And 14% were undecided in that uh, question there. So uh, good information. Um, we uh, can see that 100% of our uh, attendees are between the age of 51 and 75. Uh, and most are in the Northwest with some in the Southeast and Southwest quadrant, quadrants. And then we have some information about how did you hear about this meeting? Um, sorry. Oh, I can actually open this up bigger. <laughs> sorry. Um, so social media, a lot of people are, are using that these days. So that makes sense. Uh, city website, the city uh, e-newsletter, also a popular um, way to stay connected. If, if you're not uh, signed up for that, that's a good thing to sign up for. 
um, for park planning and other uh, outlets for, uh, for in, uh, information and outlet for other information. And then 14% other. We also had signs in the park and, and things like that and at the school as well. Um, and how often do you visit a city park? Um, we have uh, weekly users. We have a number of daily users at 29% and uh, once a month, and then 14% who actually don't use any parks at all. So there you have it, the results of poll number two. That's all helpful information. And we will um, consider all of that in our next steps here with these um, um, alternative designs. Um, at this point, it is time for our live um, Q&A session. So um, we're gonna open it up to um, additional uh, input that you may have questions and comments that you may have um, on the schemes uh, or anything else that's been presented here uh, tonight. Shelly, can you let us know how, how best to proceed with this portion of tonight's meeting? Thank you. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and the viewers. The first speaker will be acknowledged and invited to speak. So please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so. Your microphone will be unmuted at the end of that count. You're sorry, your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown or at the conclusion of your comment. If you're participating in the meeting from the Spanish channel in Zoom, we have an interpreter on standby on the English channel to assist you during your public comment. Just let us know. If you wish to ask a question or provide input, please be sure to pause throughout your comments to allow for interpretation. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for your comments. For Spanish speakers, at the time you hear your name called, turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. This icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. So we're gonna start the countdown slide and Anybody wishing to comment, please go ahead and raise your hand at this time. If you're on the phone, please press star nine. All right, our first speaker is Ellen. Ellen, we're gonna go ahead and ask you to unmute yourself. Ellen, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. We can, we can hear you, go ahead. I got to talk fast. Um, I indicated on the question about what to do with the Cancer Survivors Monument that I didn't know I needed more information. And the reason I need more information is my recollection is that that monument was donated to the city. And so, and I don't know if that's correct or not, but I wanted to know what the source was, how we got that monument. And um, if it was donated by somebody, it seems to me that we should take into consideration what their wishes would be for what happens to it. We've had so many other important historical structures that have been donated to the city that have just ended up being taken apart and put in storage and that sort of thing, which I think has been not the right way to go. So those were my questions that I had about that before a decision is made about what to do with it. That's all. Thank you, Ellen. And I can jump in with a quick answer with that, I think. <laughs> and Scott or Nicole or David, please follow up if you have anything else. But the <clears throat> cancer survivor art was donate, donated from the Block Foundation, uh, which started, they started years ago um, implementing the same art piece that you see at Fremont Park across the nation at different places across the nation. Um, and it is, um, and so it was a donation. That's why we're looking at potentially relocating it, and um, and with the idea of not not destroying this, but can we relocate it either in the park, or can we um, donate it somewhere that would be really useful, um, or maybe move it to a larger park where it could be 
more enjoyed by a larger variety of, of folks. So it was originally donated, and although it's not original artwork, it was accessioned into the Art and Public Places Committee so that it can receive a periodic um, cleaning and restoration as needed. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of background about the art to help you make your, your decision. And if there's anybody else on the panel that has additional information, please jump in. All right, thank you. We'll call our next speaker, Hugh. We're gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Good. Um, uh, Hugh Futrell, I, I'm the chair of the Downtown Action Organization that administers the Downtown Business Improvement District. And I know that uh, Cadence uh, Allison, the executive director, looks forward to connecting with, uh, uh, with all of you, Scott and Jen, uh, to give the perspective of the DAO. Uh, but I'm not participating as, as a DAO chair. Um, as I think you know, I, my company owns the housing project under construction across the street, as well as other buildings downtown. And that'll be about 100, and, that will be exactly 108 units. And that means perhaps 200 to 250 residents. And so we do have a sense based on our expectations of occupancy, what, what those tenants are likely to want. And that does reflect part of the comments I'm gonna make right now. One of the most fundamental issues is the issue of indigence and homelessness uh, within the park. Um, and lines of sight uh, uh, for public safety are fundamental, uh, but so is the need to prevent encampments growing. Uh, the most wonderful design can be created. And you, some of these, three of these four are, are superb uh, conceptual designs. But unless that issue is dealt with, public will not be able to successfully activate and use the park. So I would encourage the notion of perimeter ironwork fencing, highly attractive uh, with gates that can be locked at dusk. Um, this is really, really an, an important issue. Secondly, uh, we would encourage as, as, as noted in the memorandum, which I, I, I provided uh, uh, to the city, uh, that too much hardscape that invites skateboarding is a mistake. Skateboarding is available across the street in the middle school, vast amounts of asphalt there. Um, we have the experience of Cordas Square and that large plaza and the impact of bike, bikers and skateboarders in depriving the public uh, of the ability uh, to use large portions of, of that plaza and extremely serious enforcement issues that the, the police and the city generally, generally face. So softscape is urgent. In terms of the play areas, those are critical. Small children are likely to predominate among the children in our buildings. So we encourage particular focus on what is attractive and safe for small children, including clearly delineated areas, uh, a la Central Park and Golden Gate Park, where you've got low, low fencing and gates that give parents uh, a sense of security. Uh, and finally, uh, relocating uh, the, the uh, Cancer Survivors Park really is essential aesthetically. Uh, but I want to commend the work that the city has done so far in the design team, um, except for I, schematic number two, which has certain problems. Uh, the work has been done is outstanding and is very encouraging. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hugh, I, I think great comments. Um, Shelly, do, do we have any additional um, commenters? We do, we have two. Uh, the next one will be Denise. Would you like Denise to speak now? Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Go ahead, Denise. Hi, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I do agree with Hugh on the homeless situation. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of dark places currently in that park and also um, the potential if you put in uh, picnic tables uh, and seating that that would be overtaken uh, by encampments where they can hook up their tents uh, or hang out during the day. So I, I guess I would encourage if you're gonna do that, that you don't have just flat tables and seating, you have, especially on the seating dividers, 
so that they can't be used as beds, which is unfortunate, but we do have a homeless service uh, shelter that uh, will accept people off the street. So there are, are alternatives, but I'm mostly calling because um, I'm concerned and disappointed that that lovely fountain is not incorporated in any of the designs, nor is there any mention about uh, where it's going to end up. And so I'm wondering if you can tell us uh, if A, there's an opportunity to plant it with flowers and not use it for water. I think it's kind of been going that direction anyway uh, and keep it in the park. And if that isn't going to um, happen, which would be unfortunate, if you can tell us where is the fountain going and if it's for sale, I'll put in the first bid. So I uh, hope to hear an answer to that tonight, thanks. Yeah, um, thank you, Denise. I will uh, start it off, but others on the panel will probably have um, things to say as well. I think that, um, you know, you heard from Nicole about some of the, the, the problematic aspects in terms of the maintenance and, and sight lines, uh, challenges that, that, that it creates in, in its height and position on the site currently. Um, some of the ideas, um, yeah, it does not show up in any of the, 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 the four schemes thus far, but um, we have some ideas about possibly reusing certain elements um, the, of the materials, the stone work perhaps could uh, show up in some of the, the walls or, or planters um, or, or edges to some of the walkways and things like that. Um, uh, and I know that there's other other ideas that the team have, have talked about as well. Um, if you wanted to chime in too, either Nicole or, or David. Uh, well, we, you know, we really love the, the design itself. Um, you know, it really comes down to um, the, the water feature, you know, the location it is, um, it's the promenade, you know, we did, we looked, really hard and studied ideas in which we kept that shape and thought about it becoming something else. We, it just, um, they never, it never felt like it was doing, um, it was, it was um, this strong enough design or meeting a potential that the park could really be, you know, become, like we want this park to become a magnet. And all the ideas that we had for reusing the fountain were, were just not quite as exciting as the other ideas and we didn't feel it was the best use of the space. That said, you know, I have a thought of, wow, well, wouldn't it be great if maybe that's, um, you know, it somehow we use that, um, the, the ram's head feature in the wall and think about it in a, in a play area or a sand pit or something like that. You know, we tried to brainstorm ways to, to use it and, if economically feasible, and if the and if it seems like the city, um, the community is really excited about keeping that, you know, then I think it's something that we can consider. Um, it would be really expensive to move, and 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 it would be, um, you know, kind of um, a rather daunting task to to relocate it. But um, it's something that we we can consider. All right, thank you. Our next speaker will be Carol. Hi, Carol. We're going to go ahead and ask you to unmute. Hi, I would like to piggyback on the last speaker and say that I noted that in all of the plans presented, the fountain was gone. Uh, this seems to be a city decision that was made before community input was really asked about that. Um, the fact that this fountain is made from local cobblestones, that it was a WPA feature developed in the 1920s, is really a part of the city. And I'm wondering, number one, if that's something that perhaps you could gather more community input on, um, give the community some historical background. That goes a long way. If the fountain has to go, I understand it is outdated and water is very precious. Um, the repurposing of those local cobblestones in this park would be a bare minimum in my impression. Um, the thought of fencing the park is absolutely horrifying. 
eyes on the park, community engagement, community use of the park. This is what activates and keeps a park safe in my opinion. I'm wondering if the team has had a chance to work with the city on the um, half mile radius of this area in the future. Not only is the apartment building with 250 residents going in across the street, there is a 90,000 square foot professional medical office building that's very close to being approved one block away. The downtown area will be different 10 years from now. And this historic park needs to be um, pertinent to both today's families and also the families 10 years from now. And I thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Carol. And I'll just jump in really quick um, to let you know that certainly any decision about fountains or anything that was not made in advance of any sort of public uh, comments we received or it was not the direction given. Um, it was just accumulation of design process at this point. And we absolutely agree that incorporating elements of this fountain are certainly something we will move forward with. Uh, and once we get all the comments back from not only this evening, uh, but all the other survey comments we'll receive online, as well as from our business district and Santa Rosa Middle School, so we can really reach a wide cross section of the city. Uh, and we've gone out beyond the half mile radius of uh, reaching out to folks that we will definitely take all the comments into consideration and if keeping the pond is something that someone is a strong desire in this community, we can absolutely come back to the table with something um, that memorializes that in some way. So hopefully that, that gives you a, a sense of where we've come from and where we're going. And then certainly Nicole, David, Scott, if you have anything else to, to add to make sure we're responding to that question. Well, I, I think just to layer one other factor into it is, is the maintenance upkeep that uh, has to be um, supported uh, wholeheartedly if we are to keep the pond. And, and that is a, a, an issue that um, is uh, under consideration throughout all conditions that we're looking at for the park. Thank you, David. I think that um, also I would reiterate the the idea of um, relocating or moving the fountain. Um, it, it's a it, it's a site specific element that was built there. It, it, it seems, um, and that the cost to actually move it would be rather rather extensive. Um, and and I and I, I think the team is is just looking at the the placement of it uh, being not quite right going forward. I mean, and particularly if you look at how it's sort of used right now, it's become, um, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a living room for a certain group of folks that have sort of occupied that, that, that fountain. And, and it, to me, it seems like, um, it, you know, reworking that whole, that whole area is so, is so critical and, um, the fountain being such a, you know, while it while it is beautiful and it does have a historic uh, component to it, that um, it it's not, it it isn't maybe the right thing for the next ten years or or twenty years or looking a, a more forward looking kind of uh, approach. But like Jen said, I think you know no decisions have been made, and if and if there is a strong desire to to reconsider that that idea that notion going forward, we can certainly do that. So. Um, are there, do we have additional comments, Shelly, uh, on the line, additional hands up? We have no more speakers at this time. Okay. Um, does any, uh, do any of the other panelists have any, any, anything else to say in response to any of the comments or, or questions we've heard tonight? I would just like to add for anybody else that, you know, one thing that Nicole brought up early on when we had the presentation of the four design layouts is 
often in a virtual setting, we don't get the opportunity to say the little bits and pieces that we like from each of the designs and stuff. So, you know, I encourage anybody tonight, if you have any, any comments about that, to please speak up or um, certainly we have a more extensive survey online. If you would like to handwrite in, or not handwrite, but uh, electronically type in things uh, that are a little more detail, we'll have that survey available. And of, uh, of course, um, we're all um, available with the city as well if you, if you want to have a conversation. So uh, feel free to speak up tonight if you have anything you want to say about those or, um, or we have the survey as well. Okay, seeing no hands shooting up, um, we uh, will we'll continue and, and sort of wrap up tonight's meeting. Um, in the, the days and weeks following this meeting, we will uh, you know, very much embark on another round of creative thinking with uh, David and Nicole and their team um, based on you know, what we're hearing here tonight and um, and, 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 and rework um, the designs with the goal of, of kind of um, creating a, a preferred alternative, a, a concept that you know, takes into consideration um, many of these different ideas and, and thoughts. And it may well be um, you know, kind of a hybrid as Nicole was mentioning, but um, as, as she stated in her, in her presentation, it very much is a work in progress right now. And we thank you for being part of that work and part, part of that uh, a progress towards uh, uh, an alternative that will hopefully really reflect the, the desires of, of the community, um, the current needs of the community and, and the future needs as well um, with the way things are, are changing um, downtown and in this particular part of downtown um, specifically. So as Jen mentioned, um, uh, well, I should say the, the next meeting, meeting number three, would be then to pre 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 present that uh, preferred master plan concept. We're looking at some time in April to do that. So stay tuned for an actual date as we get closer there. Um, please um, check the website. If we could have the next slide uh, up, please, which I believe has some information about uh, where the site or the online survey will live. Some of the questions are in fact the same um, as we're a part of the polling, but um, it does have uh, some write-in uh, uh, questions as well so that you can um, feel free to expand on, on, on your ideas. Um, uh, you can also feel free to you know, contact me directly uh, via email uh, or phone as you, you can see my information there on the screen or it is also available through the, at the website, at the park, uh, the project website. Um, so we will um, kind of uh, look to conclude our meeting here tonight. And again, I just wanna you know, thank you all for being here. And this is a really unique project and unique park in our city and uh, we're really excited about you know um, giving it new life and and we're excited about um, hearing all of your ideas and continuing to move forward with uh, Meyer uh, David and Nicole Meyer landscape architects to create uh, the best uh, solution for for the future of this park so thanks David and Nicole and thank you all for being here we really appreciate your participation in the product in the process. Thank, Thank you, you all for your comments. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Jen. Good night. Good night, Scott. Good night. Thanks. Good night, Nicole. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>